This is the Bates Bobcast, our weekly podcast where we take a look at the week that was in Bates Athletics. My name is Aaron Morse, and this week we update you on the men's basketball team's winning streak. The women's basketball team picked up a big NASCAC win. The men's squash team beat Williams at Williams for the first time ever, and the men's swimming and diving team remains undefeated. Plus, we preview the indoor track and field season. All that and more coming up on the Bates Bobcast. It's the first Bobcast of the new year. So let's catch you up on the men's and women's basketball teams. The men defeated Farmingdale State and Framingham State over the holidays at the NYU Men's Basketball Classic. Then they went to Brandeis last Tuesday and prevailed 73-66. NASCAC play started on Friday, and the Bobcats traveled to Colby and defeated the Mules 75-62. Then they beat Bowden on Saturday in Brunswick for the first time since 2011. Their 64-59 win gives Bates a six-game winning streak and a 2-0 record in NASCAC play for the first time since 2006. On Saturday, first-year Tom Coyne scored a career-high 23 points to lead Bates to victory. We sat down with the Mainer to talk all things Bobcat hoops. Well, a great weekend for the men's basketball team, Tom. And first of all, I want to ask you about you know, getting the revenge against Colby, I know <laughs> the tough loss earlier this year. What was it like to beat them, you know, in NESCAC play when it really matters? Yeah, I mean, that game was obviously tough. Uh, ho- home game, a lot of people there. Didn't play our best, and just obviously the way it ended was really tough. So we rem- we remember that feeling, and uh, we really wanted to get them back uh, in NESCAC play when it really counted. And we came out, we played really well, uh, so it worked out. Everyone stepped up. Everyone was playing well. I think we played, we beat them by like 20. We played most mostly everyone. So that was just a good way to start an SCAC play. And you personally, the very next day against Bowden, you, you guys find yourselves down by nine in the second half, and then you go on a personal 9-0 run. What was opening up for you then? Yeah, I mean, I just had, I had a couple open shots. I hit them, uh, just kind of found some holes in their defense, so I just tried to attack and uh, made a couple plays. I didn't really I guess I didn't really realize that I did that. It just kind of happened, but it felt good. Um, and then we just kind of took over from there, so it was nice. Yeah, when you're in the moment, you don't really realize what's happening, right? Yeah, exactly. You just kind of, I just kind of did my thing. I had a couple open shots, uh, knocked them down. Offense was working. They just kind of left me open, so I just took advantage of it. And then, as a Mainer, you know, you're playing Colby, you're playing Bowden. You probably played against these guys in high school, right? Yeah, I mean, obviously, being from Maine, like I understand the, uh, the like passion that people have with the rivalry between the, th- the three schools. So it was really cool to be a part of it and help the team win. Um, obviously, like. I see a lot of like familiar faces, like people following me in high school. They come to the college games, so it was cool to kind of do that. And like, obviously, I have friends on Bowden, friends on Colby. I know a lot of people that have gone to those schools, so it was cool to be a part of it. And then, as a first year, I mean, when you're coming in, did you talk to any of those people you know uh, from your high school days who have played the Nets? Cack, what what's it like? Yeah, I mean, I I looked at all three schools in Maine, and I just know like it's obviously really good basketball. A lot of people in Maine care. And, like, for me, that was – I, I kind of wanted to stay in Maine for reasons like that. People are I – mean, obviously, I know, like, people that are there now. I know people that graduate from all the schools. So it was just kind of cool. That was a big reason going to Bates. I think Bates is just, like, the best fit for me personally. Uh, just there was something about it I just liked. And now it's just really cool to be able to kind of be part of that rivalry between the three schools. And then another one of the first years, uh, Nick Gilpin, a fellow Mainer. Uh, did, I assume you played against him in high school? Yeah, we played We played with each other, actually. We played AAU for a little bit together early on in high school. And then, he, we, I don't know, we played each other in high school, like preseason stuff, but he was in a different conference. He was up north, I was down south. So, like, obviously we were good friends throughout high school. And we played each other once in a while. But, like, we went on our visit together. We, like, kind of, we were talking about going to Bates, like, together. So we were pretty pumped that it worked out. For you personally, what's been the biggest adjustment to the college game? Yeah, I mean, it's been, it was definitely tough. I think I've matured a little bit since the beginning of the year, but, like, the game's just faster from high school to college, and for me it was just, like, kind of figuring that out with speed, like the speed of the game, how, how to play. I've, everything's got to be a lot more tighter, I guess, and uh, I think I've adjusted well, and it's just as the season goes on, naturally, with more experience you're going to get better and 
understand the game and just kind of figure it all out. And as a guard, it must be nice to have uh, Malcolm and Marcus of uh, the ball too, right? Exactly. Like obviously, we play an inside-out game and uh, work through them, and it just makes us hard to defend when we have shooters on the outside, and then the twins just like doing their thing down low. It's kind of hard to defend. Whether you if you want to double them, we can knock down shots. If you don't, then they're gonna do their thing. So it's it's been, it's been working out well, and hopefully, we can keep it going. Obviously, a 2-0 start to NESCAC play. You get a week here to prepare for Hamilton. Um, you know, What do you think the points of emphasis will be this week in practice from Coach Furbush? Yeah, I mean, we're definitely going to have to lock in. I think we've done a good job all year of just kind of like focusing one game at a time and looking at the task ahead of us. So, I mean, we're going to have to have a good – got a whole week to practice. We're going to have to lock in. Um, I mean, we'll do, obviously, a lot of prepara- preparation. I don't really – being a freshman, I don't really know, obviously, the how it works. Back-to-back days, I've only done it once, but yeah. – I'm sure that coach will uh, put us in the right position to win. So it would be big for us to get a couple of wins again. We're starting off well. Hopefully we can keep it going. And you probably are aware of how loud this place can get, right? Yeah, I mean, I <laughs> I got a, the Colby game was crazy. Like, it was Saturday night, obviously, like, rival game. It, one of the craziest atmospheres I've ever played in. Just, like, people everywhere, like, yelling super loud. That's why it was tough to get to lose. But I'm excited. To, you know, we have, like, four home games, I think, coming up students are back so it should be a good time absolutely and then I guess last question for you I mean after the voting game did coach say anything to you about you know what you did or what you know they want looking for you now going forward and whatnot I mean it was it was still all about the team like we have so many I feel like we just have so many weapons that like anyone can kind of do that on any given night that's what makes it so hard to prepare for so I mean I'm just going to keep doing my job you know come in knock down shots just do whatever it takes to help the team but other than that, it's just all business going forward. Same old thing. All right, Tom, thanks so much for joining us yeah, during no the Bobcats. Problem. Thank you. Thanks for having me. The women's basketball team split a pair of games at the Salem State Holiday Classic and dropped a road contest to Keene State last Tuesday. But on Friday, the Bobcats opened NESCAC play firing on all cylinders, knocking off Colby 64-57. to With Bates down by too late, they rallied behind great rebounding and the sharp shooting of Ali Capola. Bates though with the ball down by two. Here's Capola in the corner. Now Henshaw left wing outside Davenport. Bounce pass for Connors. Step back, 15 footer in and out. Capola the rebound, but she misses the layup and she gets her own rebound again. She gets that to Henshaw. Top of the key, Christoffi. Now Davenport, her 15 footer, no good. Another rebound for Bates. This time it's Connors with the rebound. Bobcats down by two, new shot clock, Connors to Coppola, that's a long two, it's good! Ali Coppola ties it at 54, 4.56 to go in the game! She gets it to Coppola, Coppola working that low block, double teamed, doesn't matter! Coppola another bucket, she's got 20, and the Bobcats lead, 56-54. Back to Connors, top of the key, 50 on the shot clock, here's Henshaw, back to Connors. Off the screen from Coppola. Connor steps back. Here's Coppola. That's a three. And she knocks it down. Ali Coppola on fire. And the Bobcats lead 59 54. That's only the second made three pointer of her career. Coppola scored a career high 24 points and grabbed 16 rebounds. Head coach Allison Montgomery had this to say after the game. Ali just sort of was like, I'm not going to be denied. I'm beating Colby at home. This is our game. I'm going to hit a three, which is like I think our second of her career. Um, so just, yeah, I think, and, and was just really confident in the post. Throughout the fourth quarter when there were timeouts called, were you just telling the team, all right, we're going to feed it to Ali? <laughs> you know, not really. It was more, I think, with our team right now, just as we continue to um, – build on our culture of like understanding how to win and to kind of string together four quarters it's like it, it, there, those timeouts are more like we got this we know what we're doing let's keep doing what got us here stay composed one possession at a time like don't start thinking about are we going to win or lose this game like start thinking about are we going to win or lose this possession so we talked a lot about rebounding actually um needing to get offensive rebounds and you know the stats showed that that's that was a huge difference in the game out rebounding them by 20 and during that stretch when they took a little lead it was like we had a couple of possessions where we got like three offensive rebounds in a row and i think that gave us energy and of course gave us another chance to score on Saturday, the Bobcats put a scare into number 17 nationally ranked Bowdoin before falling 70 to 58. Bates led by as many as 10 points in the first half before the Polar Bears rallied. Capola was outstanding again, tallying another double double 
with 17 points and 10 rebounds. For her efforts, Ali Capola is our female Bobcat of the week. I mean, this season in general has been really fun. Um, definitely some ups and downs in terms of what's pretty visible on our record. Um, but I think we've definitely um, made a turn in putting the pieces together. And so we'll see where that takes us. A lot of road games coming up for the team. Uh, what's life like on the road for people who don't know for an SCAT student athlete? Well, obviously there is that balance with work and basketball. Sometimes um, on the road I try to never bring work on the road and get it all done before um, we leave just because, you know, once we're um, at a hotel and, you know, at the game, I really just like to be basketball, basketball, basketball and really not think about anything else. Um so life on the road is just, it's basically the same as it is here, but, you know, you're not playing in your home gym. Um, and alumni is super special, but you kind of just forget about that, and basketball is basketball, so. I wanted to ask you about the Colby game and the fourth quarter. I mean, we talked about previously earlier right after the game, but upon reflection, what was really working for you, in your opinion, you know, in that fourth quarter? What was opening up there? Because you obviously had 12 of the points Bates scored in that quarter. I wasn't really thinking at all um, in that fourth quarter, especially. Um, I was just super focused on like trying to win the game um, because that was something that since we had lost Colby earlier this season that I'd just been thinking about um, and really wanting to start off the NASCAC season like on the right note and wanting to just like put our best foot forward as a team. Um, so I think that fourth quarter it really came down to the wire and like it really that fourth quarter really determined the outcome of the game because it was such a close game um, the whole time. So I was just super focused and wanted to win. And then the very next day, obviously a tough turnaround because you're facing Bowden, and you guys gave Bowden all they could handle. What was the feeling in the locker room after that game, even though you lost? It was a really close game for most of it. Yeah, I mean, I think unanimously we all felt like we played our hearts out and played really good basketball too, um, played some great defense, um, and I think really rattled them with um, – we started what we did is we called it fist and um it is we started off in a man and then like went to zone right away so um just kind of i think really you know rattled rattled them in that way and took them a while to adjust to it um and i think we just hustled the whole time and really gave it all we had and it didn't really go our way this time obviously um but i think if we see them again in the playoffs we'll we'll get them for sure and then, I mean, it is a little tough to play a team like Bowdoin where they're substituting constantly, right? What's that like? Um, I Yes, but you don't really think about that at all or notice it in the game. Um, if anything, like, it just kind of, like, you know, you're just playing the game and, like, you're not really, you know, paying so much attention to that except for, like, each player does have different tendencies and, like, um, that's on the scout. So, like, we're – we have to know each tendency, so I think, like, as a new player comes in, you have to be like, okay, well, now, like, she's probably going to, you know, do her spin mood right or something like that. So it's kind of, like, more keeping focused defensively in that way, but offensively it doesn't change anything. And then this week in practice, what do you think the points of emphasis are going to be to prepare for this uh, big road trip coming up? Um, I think, I mean, I know today we're going to do a lot of shooting, um, and then I think... I'm not really sure um, what type of defenses Hamilton and Middlebury play, but um, I think we'll probably be focusing a lot on like ourselves and like um, maybe going over the type of defense we did against Bowdoin again and um, trying to see other ways that we can like rattle teams. As a senior, have you set any goals for yourself or for the team uh, uh, for the remainder of this season? Um, yeah, I would love to get a home seed for um, NESCAC playoffs, um, which would mean getting number four or above slot, and that's, like, definitely my primary goal um, for, um, well, myself and our team um, this season, just because, you know, I think that really means that you've had a really successful season in NESCAC by getting the fourth or above slot. I wanted to ask you about this. Um, we posted a story about the game. Uh, on the Facebook page, and Lisa Henshaw was kind of teasing you about the photo. <laughs> what was that all about? <laughs> Lisa's going to love this. Um, yeah, so that picture, like, um, in the game, like, for this, when they call it starters or yeah. whatever, um, one of the things I get lassoed out by Erica, um, the sophomore. So it's, like, literally me getting lassoed out, and this, you know, this interview isn't going to show up, my, but I can try to, like, do the move. Right. Where it's, like, you get hooked by the by the rope and get, like, pulled out. So it's that it's me doing that. Um like when they're announcing starters, so it's definitely uh, not my favorite picture. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of an inside joke on the team, sort of, right? Um, 
Well, it's more just like, Ali, you're really weird. It's not really like an inside joke on the team. It's more just like, you're really strange. But um, I'm really hoping like that picture doesn't haunt me for the rest of my life. This is looking forward. I mean, the team in general, as you know, as a senior, you see some of these young players playing right away. Um, what do you notice from them? Like, you know, Carly and, and Kelly and now Melanie's back, right? Yeah, I mean, they, I mean, the three of them are just like so just like the per- most perfect freshman I could have ever wished for like and um I think especially this weekend Mel coming back like for the first time um since her surgery was just such an awesome spark and like gave us so much energy and like obviously we got some big minutes um against Bowden and we really needed her and I'm just really excited to see what else she has um to give the rest of the season because um I think she's going to be a great player all right, great. Well, Allie, thanks so much for joining us here on the Bobcast, and congrats again on being our female Bobcat of the Week. Thank you. Our male Bobcat of the Week comes from the men's swimming and diving team. The Bobcats went on their annual training trip to Florida over the holidays and returned to sweep a dual meet at Norwich on Saturday. Then on Sunday, Bates visited Middlebury for a very competitive dual meet. The women's team was outscored by Middlebury, but the men's team beat the Panthers for the second straight year. Leading the charge all weekend was junior Jonathan Depew. He won the 100 butterfly against Norwich on Saturday and followed that up with wins in the 400 free relay, 200 free, and 100 butterfly on Sunday against Middlebury. He is the fourth in a long line of Depews who have thrived at Bates, and he is our male Bobcat of the Week. So I actually have um, three siblings, and all three of my siblings attended Bates College um, and actually swam for Bates College, too. So I was introduced to the program um, through my siblings. Um, and basically how my oldest sibling, my brother Nathaniel, um, found Bates was my grandparents live um, in New Hampshire, and we would summer in New Hampshire um, every year. We would spend about uh, four weeks in New Hampshire, um, going to summer camp and hanging out. Um, so my brother started looking at schools out on the East coast, um, around where my grandparents are from, uh, or lived. And, um, he ended up liking Bates a lot, liking coach Casares a lot. Um, and he was actually part of the initial recruiting class, uh, for coach Casares. So, um, and then it followed up with my sister, Emily, um, coming here, and then um, also my sister Caroline coming here. So when I was looking at schools, I was um, originally a little, little hesitant to come to come to Bates just because of all my siblings here, but um, ended up being great decision. So yeah, that's really awesome. So what's it like to kind of carry on the Depew legacy here at Bates? <laughs> um, it's fun. It's um, you hear stories of your siblings coming here and. Um, from other teammates who spent time with them, so that's always fun. Um, and to also just kind of, like, do your own thing, too, um, and kind of, like, f- find your own little groove um, within the program is neat, too. So, and that I've been able to do that here, so. And then this past weekend, you won all your individual events for far some great relays also. What was the past weekend like for you? What was working for you so well out there? Um, so we just came back from yeah. a Florida training trip. Um, which was about a eight day trip down in in sunny Florida, uh, swimming outside, which was really nice. Um, and that's a lot of it's doubles every day, so it's a lot of um, intense training. Um, so my mindset coming back uh, to Bates, and then and it, when we raced Norwich and Middlebury, was basically just to um, kind of do like a mind over matter thing, where you know it's uh, all the races are going to hurt at this point in the season, uh, just because of tired muscles sore muscles everything like that so just kind of like putting that aside knowing that everything was going to hurt just swim swim the best you can at this point in the season and hope for the best results do a lot of not really worry about the time so much as um trying to put together good races um that you know you can you can go back to at NESCAC championships and be able to say you know that's how I wanted to swim that race so I imagine the training trip is very good long term, but short term you're probably feeling it a little bit, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, it's a doubles, doubles uh, throughout the whole day, and and they're not even. I mean, they're like we 
you know, one of the practices in the morning is three hours. So, uh -huh. it's a, yeah, but it's good. It's good training. Excellent. And then, I mean, the men's team, you've won every meet you've been in so far uh, in terms of the team as a whole. And so, uh, right on track, it seems like, where's some of the goals you have set for the future? I know, obviously, NESCACs are the, the biggest meet, really. Yep. Um, yeah, our diving coach, Coach Bartley, always says, uh, keep your eyes on the prize, with the prize being NESCAC championships. Um, but this Friday, we have a big meet. Mm -hmm. Um, against Bowdoin, uh, who last year we ended up beating by one point um, on the last relay race, which is super exciting. Um, so, yeah, so this, this Friday, 6.30, uh, we swim Bowdoin, and um, we're going to have to be on our A game to, to beat Bowdoin. So it's a good rivalry. Absolutely. That's significant because that's your only home swim meet of the year, yeah, right? Exactly. So when people come to watch, what can they expect to witness? Um, a lot of... Uh, high energy, fast paced um, uh, swimming. It's a it's going to be a shorter event meet, so that means a lot of fifties and hundreds, um, which usually lends itself to a little bit of a more exciting meet than a mile or a thousand <laughs> or really right. long events. So yeah, awesome. And then I always ask the swimmers this, but what's your favorite event to participate in? Um, for me, depends how I'm feeling, but usually usually the two hundred free. Why is that? Um, just because. I'm not I'm not a really like a, a sprinter, so I need a little bit to get going, but um, but it's not super long like a 500 or a thousand where it sometimes drags on a little bit. But yeah, excellent. I know the men's swimming team just getting better and better every year. It seems like I mean, what's that like to especially for you because you know how it was a while back and now to see it grow like this. What does it mean to you? Um, it's good. It's it's always been a very solid team um, when I've been here. Um, so it's it's kind of good because you you're starting to build a culture where, um, you know, we're expected to beat boat in in Middlebury every year and things like that. So, um, yeah, but it's a lot of fun. Good team to be on. Coach is a great coach, um, and we also have Coach uh, Vanessa Williamson and uh, Coach uh, Bartley and Coach um, Wallace. So all those the whole staff is great. Um, each coach has their, you know, sort of like own personality and everything like that, and it comes together really well to, um, you know, a push push uh, the the swimmers, and then also just to, uh, you know, have a good time too, because that's a big part of it. When you're having a good time, you're able to swim fast and do well. Well, Jonathan DePew, our male Bobcat of the week. Thanks so much. Thank you. The men's and women's squash teams traveled to Middlebury and Williams over the weekend to take on two of their biggest NASCAC rivals. The men fell to the Panthers 6-3, while the women lost a heartbreaker 5-4. But the next day, the men bounced back and won at Williams for the first time in program history, defeating the Eves 8-1. The women fell 7-2. But first year, Eliza Dunham earned NESCAC Women's Squash Player of the Week honors for her 2-0 week. She won twice at the number five position, sweeping both of her opponents. Senior Captain Spencer Burt was named the NESCAC Men's Squash Player of the Week. He won twice at the number five position as well. But perhaps the most interesting story to emerge from this past weekend belongs to senior Carlos Ames. He went 2-0 at the number nine position, and on Sunday, the Williamstown native returned to his hometown to take on the college he grew up watching and the coach who first taught him all about squash. Wow, where to begin? Uh, that experience was, uh, was a great feeling um, just to play in front of my uh, family and um, my best friends came out. Um, and my home courts was a great um, experience. Um, we've played there once before when I was a sophomore and I think I lost both my matches on this weekend two years ago so um, to bounce back and just to like evaluate and see how far I've come as a player in the last couple of years has uh, I think been tremendous um, coming off a torn Achilles last year that really caught me off guard um, something you can't really help but also just sort of having it happen at a time when I had my best year um, was really um, a really bad injury for me. Uh, really, like, put my confidence at a low. And uh, so just thinking about all the stuff that I've been through in the past year really is, uh, made a big difference, and uh, I'm really happy with how I played this weekend. Excellent. And, yeah, um, the Williams coach used to coach you. Tell us about that. 
Uh, yeah, Zoffy Levy, he's uh, quite a guy. Uh, he's uh, pretty much been with me from the beginning, um, always supported me, he's taught me how to hold a racket, how to pretty much just play the game of squash and um, kind of opened the door for me and meeting a lot of people. He's been great and playing against him is always great because he, as much as we love each other, uh, uh, we tease each other all the time. We have a kind of a funny relationship, but uh, just to like beat him and uh, have him coach against me and sort of so show him, you know, that, you know, he doesn't know my weaknesses now and like all the stuff that he used to like, you know, sort of put me down about. It was it was great. It was a great victory. We mentioned uh, the, the program, obviously, I never won at Williams on those courts. Yeah. And so did you know that coming in and, and whatnot? Yeah. Yeah, that was that's big. Uh, that's a big moment for Bates squash history. Uh, I definitely knew that coming in. Uh, Pat has told us many times this, obviously, um, but he did a great job preparing us. Uh, we preach and practice all the time. Just, um, you know, play your best and control what you can control, and good things will happen. And I think he did a really good job preparing all of us and uh, keeping us sort of calm, you know, in calm water. So that was great. And uh, I think the freshmen don't really know, you know, they don't really know how serious we take our rival matches between Middlebury and Williams because um, they're big rivals. So I think just to, for them to get that experience in um, will just help them even be better for years to come. So I think it was a great uh, great weekend for that. Yeah, the team in general, obviously, you personally got a victory against Middlebury, but the team uh, lost that particular match. And so how was the team able to bounce back, and you notice, the very next day to get such a convincing win, an 8-1 victory like that over Williams? Yeah, I mean... Just a day is really not a lot of time to sort of, you know, regroup and, you know, evaluate yourself. But um, I think we did a really good job of handling the situation. We met as a team uh, right after the, the Middlebury match and said that, you know, we had to sort of flush away this loss and, you know, get our minds straight for the Williams match because Williams is just as usually, if not just as good as uh, Middlebury has in the past. But we know we knew that they were a little bit weaker this year coming in. Um, so we really, we really knew we we could do it, um, but it just we had to be in the right state of mind, you know, in order to get it done. So you're a senior now, but how have you kind of developed as a squash player through your four years here at Bates? I think it's been a long, a uh, lot of ups and downs, a long road for me. Uh, looking at myself when I was a freshman, I was sort of unaware of sort of the things that you know would happen in a squash match, so like high pressure situations, um, and you know, not always wanting to win you know like and when, just to like where I'm at right now I think not really folk when you're going into the match it's not really focusing on the outcome and just like playing the, each rally as it comes is really like sort of the way I approach my game and how I approach a match um, the results will come you know you're not going to win every single match but you know when I was younger I sort of you know put so and I still do I, I'm really hard on myself I put a lot of pressure on myself but you know when I was younger I sort of told myself you know I need to win I have to win um and you know I still kind of do but I sort of um that just comes with experience so I've sort of like just grown Pat's the head coach but I know in squash obviously the players coach each other a lot of the time so what players have you worked with them you know in your career to help you out yeah I, th I think I've worked with pretty much everybody on the team <laughs> just since this <laughs> it's a small group of guys yeah. but especially um Karan Aurora he's uh probably been with, he's actually been my day one friend here at Bates. Uh, we roomed together sophomore year. He was the captain the last two years. He's really he really like, took me under his wing uh, as, when I came in at Bates, and um, he probably understands me the most, gets me the most. So he knows how to critique my game, and he knows what I'm, my strengths are, my weaknesses are. Um, so having him, you know, around this year is especially like great. I couldn't be more thankful, um, and he actually helped me in both my matches this weekend when I went down. Um, when I went up 2-0 and then right. the guy passed, got it back to 2-all, he, uh, he helped me like uh, find the inner energy and strength to get back on my men mental game. and um, Yeah. Yeah, when that happens, you go up 2-0 at Williams, <laughs> and then the guy is able to win the next two games. What's going through your head at that time? I was definitely rattled. Uh, he, I knew that I had a lot of experience coming to the match. Um, I knew the courts were my home courts, so I knew like how the ball plays and all that kind of stuff that people don't really think about. Um, I was definitely a little bit frustrated because you know I had all my friends there and my family there, so I, was, I felt really pressured. 
but I knew the kid. I know the kid. I know the, I'm pretty close to both teams on the Williams teams just because they're always there when I play. So I knew the kid doesn't have the kid didn't really have that much, you know, official match experience. He's always he's a good player, but I just knew that he doesn't get in all the time, like on a consistent basis to the lineup. So um, I just told myself, you know, you got to stay strong. I have the bracelet that I wear that that says do your best and you know breathe that I look at um once things start to get tough and it really helps me like sort of reset and just having my friends there um really helped me find like inner energy and I don't think I would have been able to pull that one out if they weren't there so great and then last question for you obviously the season moving along now gonna have senior day festivities this weekend actually but uh what are some of your goals what are some of the team's goals here going forward um, I think some of the team's goals going forward would just be to keep improving, working hard in practice day in and day out. Uh, we have a couple of tough matches coming up with Franklin and Marshall, um, obviously in a week. And um, they're, they're going to be tough, but I think they're going to be similar to Middlebury. So we need to, you know, again, evaluate where we're at in the season, um, continue to work really hard each day, um, and, you know, we're very capable of winning. We said this at the beginning of the year. Um, we have a very good chance. We had a. We still do have a very good chance of winning the rest of our matches. Um, we wanted to go undefeated, other than the Trinity, obviously. But um, we're very capable. We're more than capable. We have so much potential on this team. Um, definitely the most competitive team I've been on in the last four years. So I think just the goal is, you know, every day, you know, get a little bit better. Um, my friend, you know, was in the crowd at Williams. He as ridiculous as this sounds, he preaches to me um, this little motto that we call earn it. Um, and I base a lot of my, uh, you know, lifestyle off of it. And pretty much when I say earn it, it's just do something better, do something each day to make yourself better, whether that's, you know, stretch, um, hide, like sleeping well and stuff and all that, all that kind of stuff. But like, The point is, like, when you're sitting down at the end of the day and you want to relax, you want to go out, you want to hang out with friends, I ask myself, like, did I earn this? And, you know, whether that's school or squash, I know it applies to both. And I I live my life by that now, and I I just thank him, you know, sort of for putting me on that. So shout-out to Brett. Uh, And I want to give a shout-out to Hank, um, Nathan, and Alex for showing up and um, coming out to cheer me on. They're, They're all at home right now. They're still on break. And also, shout out to uh, my family and Benny McComish's family. He's a freshman on the squash team for making a great dinner for us and hosting us at my house. Um, that was awesome. All right, Carlos, congrats on a great weekend, and thanks for joining us here on the Bobcast. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's time to preview the women's and men's indoor track and field seasons. They both head to MIT this Saturday at 1 o'clock to take on the Engineers and the Colby College Mules for their first meet of the season. Senior Allison Hill. One of the women's team's captains joined the Bobcast to preview their season. How excited for you, the first meet coming up this weekend. Yeah, I'm really excited. Um, really just trying to work off the momentum from last year. I think uh, this is a great opportunity because we have a really good team, young team, and very excited to go against MIT. And then I know you're obviously in the indoor, you do the 60-meter hurdles. Any other events you're focusing on this year? Yeah, I'm going to be doing the 200 and the 4x4 also. Um, hopefully I won't be doing too many 400s because it's not my favorite, but I think Jay might be training me for the 400 hurdles. So I'll probably be everything under 400, but mainly the hurdles. Gotcha. And then I understand it's a pretty young team, so you excited to find out what all the first years can offer? Yeah, really young team. I think there's only two sprinters, me and Claire, co-captains, that are seniors, and it's just a ton of freshmen, and they're all really enthusiastic and very talented. So I think they're going to do really great, this, uh, especially this meet, yeah. Yeah, this meet coming up, you're at MIT, Colby's there also. I know MIT always a good kind of measuring stick, right? Yeah, MIT is super enthusiastic. They, uh, they're they always out to win, and um, they're a little intimidating, but it's kind of nice because they're so competitive. So going against a team that's always competitive, no matter who they're against, is really good, especially for the start of the season. So I think I'm really excited about that, and their coaches are pretty crazy, so it's always fun to beat them in some events. <laughs> oh, uh, for fans who don't maybe don't know, what makes them so enthusiastic and crazy? What do they do? Um, well, right before the meet starts, they all I think they start clapping or they start chanting, and no matter where you are on the track, they all like run together and they just run over people and start yelling. Um, yeah, and so they're very. 
they're, they're uh, very enthusiastic. But I think, I'm not sure if this is an alumni meet too. Sometimes they allow like a relay team for alumni to come in. So that's always fun to see some uh, old faces there. Sure. And then um, who are some, maybe some returnees who you're excited to see on the team this year, how they do, how they progress from last season? Definitely. Uh, Jess Wilson, for sure, another co-captain. She just was great in cross country. I think she's going to do great again uh, in track. And Claire coming off uh, her 400. She's looking strong in practice, beating everyone. Uh, Aiden Eikhoff, now a sophomore. She had an amazing first year, so I can't imagine how she's going to do this year. Um, and, yeah, all the freshmen pretty much are going to be doing great. Uh, I know there's uh, Elise, a senior fellow. She's going to be doing great in um, – I think the multi as well, and Tristy, uh, Sally, obviously the jumpers, uh, always looking strong. So I think it's going to be a really good year for all of us. Yeah, obviously uh, Sally last year all American indoor. Um, how much do you get to see them do their work in the jumps, or are you pretty much focused on your sprints? Yeah, usually when they're doing jumps, we're either I'm either doing hurdles or I'm doing some other workout, but. Um, you can usually see it from the corner and we're all kind of integrated and we all cheer each other on um, but we do do the sprint workouts together so at least we get to do that together but yeah looking strong in the weight room as well so. <laughs> and obviously it's pretty cold outside right now so I'm, I mean it's good to be indoor uh, track for now right <laughs> yeah definitely it's nice being indoor I like indoor the best because you don't have to worry about the conditions and so it's all about your talent at the moment and so however you're feeling is how you're gonna do Last year, you personally were ninth at nationals in the 60-meter hurdles. Top eight get All-American. I know you got All-American in outdoor, but how motivated are you now this year for indoor after being so close last year? Yeah, I'm extremely motivated for that because it was a dagger in the heart getting the ninth, but it was also awesome because I was amazing to get there in the first place. But by .01, it was pretty tough. But I think coming in because uh, the top eight were all seniors, so it's um, motivational for me to – work hard because I want to get that top eight and get under nine seconds is my goal. Obviously, it's going to take a little bit because it's just the beginning, but um, yeah, it's definitely in my uh, vision forward. And then not this week, but the following week, uh, you'll have a home meet. Um, what, what are those like to be at home and have a bunch of other teams come in like that? Yeah, it's awesome. We usually don't get that many home meets because um, we either have them um, outdoors and they get canceled because we have too much snow. So. <laughs> Having indoor is great. Um, usually it's uh, a lot of main teams, so it's kind of it's a nice sense of community. Um, it's still really competitive, but um, and it's nice not having to travel or uh, get up really early. You can just walk right over to the meet. Um, and it's nice having some fans because, I mean, track isn't always the most number one watch sport, but I, it's nice seeing your friendly faces over there coming to watch you and support you. All right, well, we're looking forward to the women's indoor track and field season. Allie Hill, thanks so much. Thank you. Senior Blake Downey, one of the men's captains, breaks down their outlook this year. Blake, I want to talk to you a little bit about, first of all, the returnees, who you're excited to see. I know it's a big team, but who are some maybe runners or throwers? Obviously, D-Ray, one of the throwers, but who stood out to you so far? I mean, I think everybody who's coming back is off to a really great start. We've got a lot of energy uh, from the top down. We had a coaching change at the beginning of this year, and that's really fed into a lot of excitement for the guys. Um, obviously, you mentioned D-Ray. He's a huge staple down at the throwing circle for us, so he's got the shot. And the, uh, and the weight pretty wrapped up right now. He's going pretty hard on that. Um, but in the running, I'd have to say that, I mean, Pat Griffin, another captain on the team, uh, Jeff Jones in the triple jump, um, and then Colin Kraft in the sprints, those guys are all kind of spearheading those different sections of the team. Um, and then kind of, like I said, trickle-down leadership. So everybody beneath them, um, I guess, mark-wise mark, mark wise and time-wise, they're trying to compete to be just like them. So in the middle-distance squad, we got guys like Mark Fusco um, and Robbie Flynn who are kind of chasing after Pat Griffin. Um, and I guess the same in the jumps with Isaiah um, coming after Jeff Jones. So it's kind of the same. We have a huge sprint squad chasing after Colin. So it's a really good, I guess, culmination of, uh, I guess, competitiveness, but it's all kind of constructive com competition on the team right now. You touched on a coaching change. Could you elaborate? Yeah, absolutely. So um, one of our coaches uh, decided that there was a different program that he wanted to go be a part of. Um, just made more sense for him and his family. Um, and then we've we've got this new coach, Coach Curtis Johnson. Um, so he's coming in. He's changed kind of our entire outlook on our training regimen. So in, as opposed to being really technical in our sprints, um, we're a lot more conditioning based. So that's good for us right now because we're, I guess, in the best shape that we've been in a long time. Um, so going into these first couple of meets that we're going to, I guess, have a leg up on a bunch of people who might not have had that conditioning training. And just to clarify, Al's still the head yes, coach, but yes. Curtis in the, as yes, an assistant absolutely. coach. And so what role do the assistant coaches play? You touched on it a little bit, but I mean, so they're obviously very important. We maybe we don't talk about them that much, but yeah. they're obviously working with you a lot. Right? Yeah, absolutely. So I guess 
Coach Fresh and Coach Jay are the head coaches of the men's and women's team, um, and they work kind of in their own little niche area. So Coach Fresh is a throwing coach. He's moved over to the vault this year with that coaching change, so that's awesome. Um, and Coach Jay runs all the distance workouts and stuff like that. She's my workout coach too. Um, but with, with Coach Johnson and uh, Coach Kirkland and other coaches like that and other volunteers that come in, they help in smaller areas with Coach, um, coach uh, Art Feely too. He works in the jumps, Coach Kurt in the sprints, and then everybody else kind of fills in where they're needed. So it's a really big team effort, not only on the team standpoint, but also on the, uh, the coaching staff as well. Excellent. And then first meet of the year coming up this weekend at MIT. Um, I know MIT always a good measuring stick, right? Yeah, absolutely. They're, they're the best team in New England, bar none. That's something you can't really dispute. They've kind of wrapped it up a couple of years at the New England meet. So um, going in, kind of not really expecting too much out of ourselves, just to really put ourselves out there um, and compete with the best team in New England. So they're, they're going to go for it. They had their alumni meet last week. Uh, I don't think they ran some of their guys to get, get them rested for this week. And uh, we're all jacked up. We've been waiting for this day for about... I guess a couple months now, our coach has been putting days, I guess a counter down every single day, like updating how many days until this first meet. So um, once Saturday hits, we're, we're just going all the way until May. So we're excited about it. And then you have your own event coming up, uh, not this week, but the following week when Bates is hosting the Bates Invitational. But on, I know the Friday before we talked about last year with the heptathlon, uh, how, how is that pre preparation going for you? Oh, it's going fantastic. I mean, um, the competition, again, not only within the team, but also within our small group of multis. So we have Tyler Post and Brendan Donahue. Brendan's actually a freshman who's going to be a stud, I guess, coming up on the team. He's, he's got a lot of raw power right now, but his potential is huge. Um, and the same thing with Tyler. Once they both figure out what they got to do in the more technical events, then they're just going to skyrocket in their potential. Um, but the preparation for us has been pretty hardcore. We've been doing a lot of training. Um, Coach Fresh allowed us to get into the more technical stuff a little earlier this year just so we can kind of have that foundation going into the winter. Um, so it's, it's looking really good. We're going to actually have a couple D1 teams that are coming down, sending some athletes, um, and then some other unattached runners. So it's going to be a really competitive field just for the multi, which is going to be fantastic. Excellent. And then um, for you as a, one of the many captains on the team, and I about four or five captains, but, I mean, what are your guys' responsibilities? Do you guys have meetings within yourselves to you know determine how you're going to help lead the team, or how does that work? I think each of us is kind of falling into our own little role at certain mm -hmm. points. I know that Pat and Colin and Jeff were all captains last year, um, and we just recently added a distance captain, Mike Horowitz. So he's kind of corralling that entire group and being the motivator for that group, which is fantastic. And I think for me, my role is just kind of – being the person that's in all the different areas, that's kind of like what my event allows me to do, um, is that I have a connection to be with every athlete as opposed to just being with the sprinters or just being with the jumpers. I think it really helps me kind of get onto a level with all the different athletes and know, okay, that's a really good long jump mark or that's a really good throwing mark as opposed to not really knowing what marks are in certain events. Um, so it allows me to kind of get more personal with some of my teammates being like, oh, that was a great jump. What are you going to do next time? So I can kind of be like a, a player's coach at certain points um, or I guess a a coaching player, I guess. Um, <clears throat> but it's it's going to be a great year. All the guys are really falling into their roles, and there's a lot of competition between the underclass, and we've got a really strong, deep team this year, which is nice. Great. And then for you personally, and maybe for the team as well, what's an ideal finish to the indoor season in your mind right now? I mean, you're just getting started, but what are some long-term goals you have for this year? Absolutely. I mean, number one, get ourselves to nationals. Send a really good, good group of athletes to nationals. That's number one. Um, and I guess from a team standpoint, I think really competing with MIT at New England's in a couple couple weeks. I think that's kind of what our goal is right now. We we have the the capability at this point um, to really show them what we're made of right now. We like I said, we have a really deep team, and for the first time in a long time, we're kind of really strong across the entire board. Um, so kind of seeing how we stack up against them this weekend is going to be a good barometer for the entire season. Outstanding. Well, Blake, thanks so much for the, taking the time to preview the men's indoor track and field season. You're very welcome, Aaron. Thank you. Next time on the Bates Bobcast. We'll tell you how the men's and women's swimming and diving teams do in their first and only home meet of the season, except for this Friday against Bowdoin at 6.30 p.m. Plus, the basketball teams play some big NASCAT games this weekend, with the men hosting Hamilton Friday at 7 and Middlebury Saturday at 3. Squash is having their Senior Day festivities Saturday before the men take on Hobart at noon and Hamilton at 2, with the women taking on the Continentals at noon. We'll recap it all next time on the Bates Bobcast. Bates, 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 Bates.